All right, so here we are in Blender. And to get started, what we're going to have to do is bring in that texture. So to do that, I'm just going to click here and hey, split area. So I right clicked, split area. And then I go into UV Image Editor. What I should do is go File, Save As, and make sure I'm saved in the unit folder that I just made. In this case, I have my series, so I want to go out of that one. Let's see here. I want to save this in the same directory that my texture's at. And that's how I always want it to be. I always want a root directory. We'll call that the project folder. And in the project folder, it's going to be your texture. So wait a minute, hold on. And I'll call this unit one. And we can see cap locks is on, but that's okay. Looks cool. Image, open image. Notice that since I am in the root folder, it's following its relative path, okay? And the relative path is where I saved in, or commonly known as a root folder. So as long as the project and all its UV, or all its textures are in the same folder, that's what happened. Did you see that for a second when I opened that up? Isn't it kind of cool that, let's say, when I open this map up, 128. Isn't that neat? Now remember that. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. So, in a nerdy sort of way. Now, uh, as I go through this, I'm going to be using old methods and new methods and every method to do these UVs. So, please whoever watching this as a seasoned pro know that I'm, I'm teaching this in the way that I was learned and how I learned it was a good way. Okay. In the fact that I know terminology. So in other words, there is like, if I walked up to another game artist out there and I said, Hey, I made a projection of the side of this character and I decided to mirror the UVs over onto the other side to save texture resolution. Now, that being said, uh, to a complete noob, would they wouldn't understand that. So I'm going to try to teach terminology along with this so you can communicate in like forums and uh, other places where we play around with the UVs and textures and all those nerdy little places in the world. So it's important that I cover, you know, like straight on projections and stuff like that. That's why. So season pros. I would skip this video if you're a season pro. Here we go. Now, that being said, um, 1, 3, and 7 on my keyboard is the ability to go from you know side, front, top. So I want to be in a top projection. Each one of these basic shapes has its familiarities to it. So we'll look at the, a thing called projection mapping first. And to do projection mapping, I do this. First, I hit edit to go into edit mode. And then A will highlight the entire piece. Hit U on the keyboard. And I can do a projection from view. And what that does is this. Give me one solitary face which is the same that's over here. Now, if I want to see the UVs or the resolution, we can go to texture. And you can see that's where they're at. Now, let me explain how this works. The smaller the square, the actually more resolution you get. So right now, I'm at half or a quarter of the resolution. So, here, I'm going to hit L on the keyboard, 
and I'm going to hit S. That will allow me to scale. And G allows me to move. So now I've moved and scaled that to this is the 0 to 1 ratio. Okay, so right here, pretend that this goes on forever. And over here, it's a different, over here, this is 1, negative 1. This is 0, 1. 0, 1 is what we use always. Now, there is in some cases where we can use the other UVs as far as that goes, the other areas that are not showing up here. We'll get into that also and how we can kind of trick the system every once in a while into believing that there is more resolution than there is. There is a downfall to that and in the fact that we will not be able to um, bake anything. Okay, so the next one that's how you do it. So the next one, how do we do that? Well, again, I want to cover projections and how they work first. So let's let's kind of think about this. I want a projection, but I want only the faces that I could see in the projection. Okay, in other words, in this one, we're going to go and highlight the face at the very top and the very bottom. Okay. 7, and I can create a projection map by just going U, project from view. All right, so technically there's two shells here, okay? And how I know that is I can click on one solitary UV, hit L, and hit G. Notice the bottom one didn't take. When you're doing UVs, I would have this option right here left on. Uh, that's the ability to go all the way through the mesh. So when you're in 7 and you want to do a selection of faces, you can hit B on the keyboard. It's brush or box, sorry, box select. And if I box select this, I can get usually the top and bottom at the same time. Again, that's with this option on. And how do I know if it's on or off? Check this out. When I click through, I can see the other edge as a transparent. So that's box select. And now, if I hit U and say project from view, I should have two shells. G on the keyboard. There's shell one and shell two. Now if I hit uh, 3 in the keyboard, I can hop into this view and do that very same thing. So notice that this part is in the middle of a whole bunch of parts. It would be easier if I took this piece and dragged it up a little bit. And whether you want to select the faces in the orthographic or if you want to select the faces in the perspective, I don't care. Uh, so in other words, I could go in here and highlight these two faces and then hop into three on the keyboard and then do my projection map from there. And I'm moving these up because in the long run, if I have all of them, you're going to see that they would overtopple each other. Now this is all well and good. This is, this is a good way to do it and that's how you do a projection. But there are easier ways. Let's go to edge and let's think of this as a cardboard box. Go back into solid so you can see what I'm doing. If I had this as a cardboard box and I need to lay it out perfectly flat I would have to cut a certain amount of edges in here in order for that to work. So let's 
will take a knife and kind of imaginarily think that if I cut all these edges, okay, will this work? If I took a knife and I cut that amount of edges, well, let's find out. We're going to call this a seam. And how you actually do this is we we'll highlight the edge and hit mark seam. And then hit A to highlight all, U, and then unwrap. Now, if I have a, a perfectly flat box, what it is is really a T. So you can see that I have four squares here. And to show you that, I just highlight it, and that's what it looks like completely flat. So one of the rules states this. We have to stay in the 0 to 1 in order for baking to occur, and I use baking a lot. Number two, we do not overlap UVs. Okay. In other words, I don't have one square on top of the other square ever. And um, I'll get into how to break that rule later on. Okay, so we don't like this to happen. This is overlapping UVs. But in some cases, it's called stacked UVs. So that's the exception to that rule. And three, we try to make as least seams as possible. So in this case, I was able to pull this off with just a few seams. So let's look at a texture mode now. Okay, I'm going to go in here and hit A. In edit mode. And then I'm going to go like this and direct it towards UV TGA. And you notice something right off the bat. All the squares are perfectly lined up. Okay, and notice that this square merges into this square. Uh, the square merges into that square, and etc. and so forth. In some cases, even, I see this happening. So, look at white to black. Okay, I know that there's no seam here. Black to black. I know there's a seam here. So, if I'm looking at this checker pattern, it does tell you a lot about the mesh. There's no doubt about it, and how the UVs are laid out. So, we looked at projection mapping, and we looked at... Um, a basic UVW, that's what this is called. So when we UVW, it's automatically unwrapping the UVs for us. Very few programs actually do that, and Maya definitely does not do that. Now, we're going to be looking at more of a complex shape scenario and what that means in the next video.